Hey guys, welcome back to a new lecture. In this lecture, we have to talk about variables. But before that, let us take an example of our earlier maths classes. So when you were in 8th or 10th standard, you have to solve a math problem. So you might have used X, Y, Z and you might have used P, Q, R. So we use some identifiers to solve our problems. Similarly, we have to use variables to solve different type of problems and variables are really important to understand data types. So before jumping on to any heavy word or before jumping and trying to do any big task, we need to understand variables. So in programming languages like C, Java or any other programming language, the concept of variable is connected with memory location. So in other languages, a variable is imagined as store box. So it is like a container. So if I take an example of addition, suppose I need to do 5 plus 6. So what I was doing like 5 plus 6 and then simply an enter. But what if I take variable, store them into a boxes and then try to perform. Let me take an example and make you more comfortable. So if I take x equals to 5 and then y equals to 6 and then I can try to perform addition with x and y. Now x has the value of 5, y has the value of 6 and I can try to perform addition between them. So here x and y are the variables. So there is a container which has a value of 5, we call it as x and there is a container which has a value of 6, we call it as y. Now you might be thinking if I take z and keep the value of z as 5, Z will be pointing towards the same container to which X is pointing. Yeah, they will be pointing towards the same container. Let us perform this example also. Let me take Z as 5 and now let me try to get memory address of X and Z, both of them. So I just need to type ID and then here I need to give the value between the parentheses of the variable of which I need to find out the location. So if I give X you can see this is the memory location and if I try to do same thing for Z here you will get the same address and if I try to perform same thing with Y you might see some different result. So let us do that also. Here you can see X and Z have same address whereas Y has different address. Let me try to do one more thing. Uh, let us try to perform 2 plus 3 and store it in some different variable and try to find out that address. So let me take example of P equals to 2 and Q equals to 3 and then we might try to do R equals to P plus Q and let us print R and now let us check the address that is the memory address for R. Here you can see R, X and Z all have same address that means there is a container which stores the value of 5 and if any variable have the same exact value, it will point towards that particular container. I hope this point was clear because it is really important. This shows the efficiency of Python because Python is a memory efficient language. And now if I try to give a different value to Z, what will happen to the memory location? So if I do Z equals to 7 here, and then try to find out the memory location of Z, you will see a different address. So that's how memory location changes according to the value and the variables. I hope you understand this particular point. The next thing is if I directly want to find the address of 5, so you can see how the memory location is allocated. So this point was really important for you to understand the management of memory with Python. In the next lecture, we'll be talking about data types in Python.